Boeing has a big problem, and it might go further than just engineering. You've probably seen these images from Alaska Flight 1282, where a window and a section of the plane was blown out during a passenger flight at 16,000 feet, or about 4,900 meters. The decompression was so forceful that it opened the cockpit door and sucked the shirt off a boy sitting nearby. His mother had to hold on to him to prevent him from being blown out of the airplane completely. Fortunately, the plane was able to make a safe emergency landing, and aside from three minor injuries, nobody else was hurt and nobody was killed. But this was a brand new 737 MAX 9 plane from Boeing, and it had only been flying for three months. This was a brand new plane. But since the MAX line of planes have come out by Boeing since 2017, there have already been two fatal crashes. So what is going on with Boeing, and should you be worried about flying in their airplanes? Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here, and today I want to help you travel smarter. So obviously photos and videos and stories like the Alaska Airlines flight are disturbing, whether you're a nervous flyer or not. And a lot of people will say, oh, but flying is very, very safe, and it is. But the previous generations of Boeing 737s have had a fatal accident rate of 0.2 per million flights, while the 737 MAX have a 4 in a million fatal accident rate. Now that's still very safe. 4 in a million are pretty good odds, but it's 20 times worse than the previous 737 models. So it's natural to ask, if Boeing had been making these planes very safe for a very long time, what happened and what changed when the MAX came out because they're now 20 times less safe? It turns out the answer to that question is a few factors and a few factors that won't be solved very easily or won't be solved very quickly. The Boeing 737 is the most popular passenger plane ever beginning production in 1968 through the latest generation called MAX, which began in 2017. Chances are if you've flown on a commercial jet in the last 50 years on a flight longer than six hours, you've been on a Boeing 737. Throughout much of that history, Boeing was the dominant jetliner manufacturer. Its main rival, Airbus, was founded in 1970, but it took until the 1990s before it was able to become a serious rival to Boeing. A series of mergers eventually condensed the larger jetliner market into a duopoly, so it's basically Boeing and Airbus now. In the 2000s though, Airbus overtook Boeing in the narrow body aircraft market and today Airbus has a 62% share of the airliner backlog. So you can start to see how the stage is being set. For a very long time, Boeing was the dominant jetliner manufacturer, then Airbus comes along and eventually begins to compete directly with Boeing. And in a few key areas, Airbus is even able to overtake Boeing. So what happened? What changed? Why was Boeing so popular up until a point? And then why was Airbus able to overtake them? And the reason for that is a lot of things, but in short, fuel economy. In the 2010s, Airbus started using a new engine design with something called high bypass. I'm leaving out a lot of the technical details, but in short, these engines are bigger than what was previously being used. Before this, engines were made to be narrower, thinking it would reduce wind resistance. It turns out that even though they are typically wider, high bypass engines are significantly more efficient, reducing the amount of fuel a plane needs to use by up to 25%, and they're also quieter too, by up to 35%. And if you've been flying long enough or often enough, you've probably noticed planes getting quieter over the last 10, 20, 30 years. You may have also noticed a lot of the planes you're getting on are smaller, even for those long haul flights like transcontinental flights, you may have noticed that the planes are just not as big as they used to be. And a reason for that is because those new engines are more fuel efficient, it makes sense for airlines to send smaller planes more frequently than one big plane occasionally. It saves them money both in fuel costs, but also it's easier to fill up a smaller plane so there are less unused seats on a flight, the airlines profit a little bit more, so they tend to gravitate toward these narrow body jets. Make sense so far? So basically Airbus is able to gain this competitive advantage by making planes that are smaller and more fuel efficient. Airlines gravitate toward buying those planes because they are more fuel efficient. They can run more flights. They can run more flights that are full more with less empty seats. And so the narrow body plane starts taking off. So the natural question now you might be asking is, why doesn't Boeing just slap on some of those engines on their existing aircraft? Well, the answer to that question really gets us into the heart of the problem. See, the Airbus 320 was designed to have more height between the wing and the ground so it could accommodate larger engines. Boeing designs are older, so you simply can't put on a larger engine because there's not enough room under the wing. 
It's also worth mentioning that airports too are built for particular aircraft dimensions. So these changes, which might seem at least at a high level being very easy to just add new engines or to change the height of the plane, those changes actually have a lot of consequences and aren't as easy to implement as one might think. So you're Boeing. You've got bigger planes that are less efficient and becoming less popular. And that all leads to the decision to start developing the 737 MAX. Building planes takes time and experience, and Boeing didn't redesign the 737 MAX from scratch. Still, putting those larger and more powerful engines on modified existing designs and hardware have led to issues. Boeing has had to put the new engines further forward on their wings, and that combines to equal more thrust. So they have a tendency to pull the plane up a little bit more, in other words, give more lift. To compensate for this added thrust, the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, MCAS, was implemented. That's basically a computer that detects when the nose of the plane might be going up too high and then forces the plane to pitch downward. So the sensors of the plane, when it detects that the plane might be pitched up too high, would then using the MCAS automatically try to push the plane further down, except I misspoke. It wasn't sensors in the previous versions of the Max, it was sensor. So if that single sensor detected that the plane was pitched up, it will try to force the plane to pitch downward. Boeing engineers allowed the MCAS to be fed information from a single sensor with no redundancy because, quote, according to proprietary information reviewed by the Seattle Times, because they calculated the probability of a hazardous MCAS malfunction to be virtually inconceivable. The Federal Aviation Administration also seemed to agree and did not even inform pilots about the MCAS in their manuals. Unfortunately, in the case of Lion Air Flight 620 in 2018 and Ethiopian Airlines 302 in 2019, that led to two fatal crashes, killing 346 people. Boeing was later charged with fraud in order to pay compensation of $2.5 billion for concealing information from the FAA. There were failures on the part of Boeing and the FAA, who overruled their own engineers regarding the 737 MAX 8, and there have been well-documented quality control issues with the MAX 9. The MAX 9 being the model of plane Alaska Airlines 1282 was. A House Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure report also points to the FAA's practice of delegating some of its inspection functions to Boeing's own engineers, noting that this structure, quote, creates inherent conflicts of interest that have jeopardized the safety of the flying public. Since the Alaska Airlines incident with that 737 MAX 9 and the recording of this video, Boeing stock has lost 16%. And because of the grounding of the 737 MAX 8s and 7s, that has cost Boeing $21 billion up until now. Still, there are 4,500 orders for 737 MAX 8s and 737 MAX 9s from various airlines, but it seems like Boeing's push to make a profit, which they haven't had a profitable quarter since 2019, it seems like that push has led to quality control issues. So based on some internal communications that were leaked, when the 737 MAX groundings happen, it showed that one employee described the jet as, quote, designed by clowns who are in turn supervised by monkeys. So clearly there's some dysfunction at Boeing, and that starts at the top. They're in a race to compete with Airbus, but it seems like to compete with them, they're cutting some corners. Air travel, yes, is still a lot more safe than driving a car, for example, but it's really painful and it really hurts to see crashes and accidents happening due to negligence and cover-ups. So where does that leave you? Well, when booking flights, most sites will show you the plane manufacturer and type. And if you want to buy your next flight tickets with that in mind, you can. Though I'm guessing a lot of you won't bother to look up the aircraft type. And anyway, with all of the orders coming in for 737 MAXs, chances are sooner or later you're going to be flying on one of those planes. A more long-term solution for all of us is going to be more government oversight of Boeing, more investigations, and changes in production and personnel. I hope this video helps explain what some of the problems with Boeing are, and know that I've left out a lot of details, both technical and in terms of the timelines, so I'll leave a link to some of the articles you can read down in the description box, which have more information about the technical details about the engines, as well as the timelines and some other incidents that have occurred with Boeing. But I'm also interested to hear in the comment section down below what your thoughts are. What do you think about this whole Boeing situation? Is there anything you'd like to add? How do you feel about flying in Boeing planes? Has this changed your travel habits? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week. And I'll see you in the next video.